This is a presentation of the product opcrecipe.net, one of 12 product features of the full opcsystems.net suite. opcrecipe.net is used to transfer data from databases like SQL Server, Oracle, Access, and MySQL to data sources for OPC servers, OPC clients, or even Visual Studio applications. With opcrecipe.net, there are three recipe types that you can choose from. You can map specific tags to fields in a database table, or you can include in the database table the tag names that you want to write to along with the values that you want to receive from the database. There is confirmation feedback that you can enable to inform the data source that the values have been successfully transferred or if an error has occurred. As a data source you can use SQL Server, Oracle, Access, and MySQL in an open database format that's easy to query and we can programmatically or automatically based upon values from a PLC specify which data to return from the table in different record sets with a query property. You can modify properties of the recipe configurations during runtime and you can even do this programmatically from your own Visual Studio application. Each licensed service communicates to unlimited numbers of data sources. You can even use the internet as your communication source. All product features of opcsystems.net implement .NET remoting. So you can use the internet, a wide area network, or local area network very easily just by using a TCP connection. Let's see how we would set up a recipe execution. You can programmatically set up recipes using the OPC systems component as demonstrated in the VB.NET example. You can also manually set up the recipe executions using the configure application under the program group OPC systems.net. The first thing you would want to do in your recipe configuration is determine what is the data source that you want to write the values to. If you haven't reviewed the data sources video, I would suggest you do this. You can see how you can define data sources to OPC servers, OPC clients, or Visual Studio applications. Select configure tags and we will select the local service to enter in some tags that we're going to write the values to. Select the add tag button to add a tag. We'll use the name value 01 We'll add two more tags, also value 02 and value 03. From the tag list on the right, we'll select value 01 and we'll see the data type is defaulted to a double float. And the data source is set to value. If you want to have the values written to an OPC server, you would set OPC item as the data source and then browse for the OPC item that you want to set the data to. In this way, when a write occurs to an OPC systems.net tag, the value will go on down to the OPC item defined in the OPC server. Next we will add a tag to trigger the recipe execution based upon event. Enter the tag name trigger. Select it from the list and set its data type to boolean and select apply changes. There is also the possibility to provide error feedback and confirmation back to the data source. So let's add two more tags so we can see these values. Use the add tag button again and enter the tag name error. Select the error tag and set its data type to integer. Click apply changes. And the final tag we will add will have the name confirm. Select it from the tag list and set its data type to a boolean. The confirmation tag will be set to true when the recipe execution completes successfully. If there's an error that will be false and the error tag will have a non-zero number in it. We then save the tag configuration to a file. We'll use the demo configuration and now we're ready to set up the recipe execution itself and maps particular 
tag names to field names. First, we might want to define where is the data coming from. We're going to use Microsoft SQL Server as a data source for the data. I'm going to open up the SQL Server Management Studio. I'm using the free to use version of SQL Server Express, which you can download from Microsoft.com. You can also use Microsoft Access, Oracle, or MySQL. I'm going to connect to the database engine. Under the databases object, I'll right click to add a new database. I'm going to use a name of recipe test and select OK. Then double click on the databases object and there is our new recipe database. Double click on the recipe test database select the tables object and right click on it to add a new table. Now we need to define the field names that will contain the tag names and the values that we want to receive from the database. The first field I'm going to define I'm going to use the name tag name. Under the data type I can use a character type with a length of 100. The second field is where the values are going to come from. For this field name, I'll use the name tag value. And we can set the data type to an integer, boolean. Here I'm going to use the type float. We can now save that table and give it a name of multiple records. We can now close the design view, double click on the tables object, and then select the table multiple records. We are now ready to edit the values in that table. We'll select, we'll right click on the table and select open table. We can now enter into the first column the tag names that we want to write to and in the second column the values that we want to write. We'll enter in value 01 dot value to write to the value parameter of the value 01 tag with the tag value of 1. In the second record we'll enter in value 02 dot value and enter a value of 2. Tag names are case sensitive, so make sure you use the exact syntax of the tag name and the parameter value as a capital V. We'll enter in the third tag of value 03 dot value. And enter in a value in the tag value field of 3. We can then minimize SQL Server Management Studio and go back to the OPC Systems Configure application and now select Configure recipes. We'll select the local service to configure, enter a recipe name of multiple records. We'll check the box to make the recipe active. Notice that you can set an OPC systems.net tag to activate the recipe configuration to enable or disable even based upon an OPC item from an OPC server. Under the recipe type we can choose multiple records which is the default. Later in this video we'll demonstrate how to use both single record and queued records also. Under the execution type you can choose event driven, continuous to execute at a specific interval, or specific time of day to execute at a particular time of the day to execute the recipe. We'll leave the default of event driven. We can then browse for an OPC systems.net tag to trigger the recipe execution. We'll select the local service and go down to the trigger tag and select value parameter. When that value transitions from false to true, it will then execute this recipe. We'll also enable confirmation feedback and we'll assign that to the confirm tag with the value parameter so that when the recipe successfully executes, 
that tag value will be set to true. Otherwise, we'll enable the error confirmation and we'll browse for the error tag. And if the recipe execution fails, a numeric value ranging from 1 to 16 will be written to the error tag. In this way, you can have your PLC trigger the recipe execution and then receive feedback with the confirmation tag of being true if successful or the error tag, which is an integer number, being greater than zero if there was an error. Let's see how we would use the confirmation and error feedback in a typical PLC request for a recipe execution. The PLC would first set its confirmation bit and error integer to zero. Then the PLC would request the recipe execution by setting the trigger bit from false to true. The PLC would then wait for the confirmation bit to be true if the recipe execution was successful. If the recipe execution fails, the error integer will be set to a non-zero value, and then the PLC can either retry the recipe execution again or report a failure to the operator. Once the recipe execution has completed, the PLC will then set the trigger bit back to false and then repeat the process when the next recipe is needed.